Hi, I'm the Franchise King, Joel LaBava. Today, I want to talk to you about, well, how about this? Let's say that you are a recently downsized executive with many talents, maybe even a talent that is specifically focused. And you think to yourself, yeah, I don't know if I want to do the corporate shuffle again with uh, getting a new resume produced, going on interviews, flying out of town to go on interviews, being told that we're considering you for two months and then finding out, well, we decided to uh, promote from within or something ridiculous like that. If you decide that you maybe don't want to go through that again this time around, and you're of the age where it may make sense for you to go out on your own, one thought is to become a consultant, um, maybe a coach. And there are a lot of coaching franchises available. And hey, it makes sense, right? Why should I figure this whole thing out myself? Let's say that I'm really good at accounting. Um, I'm really good at operations. I'm really good at sales, whatever the case specifically. And you say, oh man, maybe a coaching franchise because hey, they have the tools, they have the technology, they probably have a CRM system, they probably have a good marketing system. All I have to do is take care of the, the lead flow that comes in and follow up. Hey, it sounds good. Plus, even if you have a significant net worth, why not spend $120,000 or $100,000 on a franchise um, as opposed to spending five or $600,000 on a franchise? Hey, why not, right? It's worth a shot. So a lot of people start looking at coaching franchises, consulting franchises. Here's the thing. And a lot of people don't know this going in. And I'm going to say that some of the fault could be with the franchisors. Here's the deal. In general, especially at the beginning, leads, potential clients, are not going to appear at your doorstep, or in this case, on your laptop. You are going to go out, you're, you're going to go have to... Ugh. <laughs> You're going to have to go out and find clients yourself. I don't care what anyone says. You're going to have to find clients. They're not going to appear magically. Well, yeah, but I know a lot of people in the business. Okay, it's one thing to know a lot of people in the business or in a business that could use coaching. It's another thing to have them sign a check and sign up for a $3,000 a month coaching gig with you. It, it, it's easy to say, oh, yes, uh, I'll, if you become a coach, you know, I, I'll, I'll sign up with you. Um, the transition from saying that to here, let me just write that check is, is big. Um, so um, your network does matter. You need to have a great network, but you're going to have to go out and find clients. And it's the biggest thing about owning a coaching franchise that you may not know. So when you're looking at coaching franchises, and you're talking to franchisees who own some of these coaching franchises, ask them how long it took to find paying clients and how they had to do it. I'm talking, you're going to have to join networking groups. You're going to have to join the Chamber of Commerce, probably. You're going to have to give um, uh, speeches, um, uh, free seminars, etc., to get people interested and to educate people about what you do. But most importantly, you're going to have to knock on doors, whether it's physically or via email or via phone or a combination of all three. That's what you're going to have to do. You're not going to be able to find clients unless you go out and get them yourself. That's the biggest thing you need to know about buying a coaching franchise. That said, it can be lucrative if you're really good at what you do, if you, if you provide results for your clients, and if you can find enough clients on a consistent basis to make this a year-long business. Thanks for watching this video. I'm the Franchise King, Joel LaBava. And please subscribe, if you have a moment, to my YouTube channel. Because it's darn good. Thanks for watching.